The internet is a worldwide computer-based network which offers unlimited access to anyone. All you need is almost any computer, a modem and a telephone line. And it is available 24 hours a day. The internet is a completely open system. It is not owned by anyone, nor is there yet any specific legislation governing its use. You may be wondering how much this worldwide communication costs. The answer is usually just a local phone call. Mark Wilderspin is now going to demonstrate how easy it is to use the internet and the services it offers. In order to actually gain access to the internet and World Wide Web, uh, the user needs to first of all take out a subscription with a service provider. The service provider uh, firstly provides uh, access to the internet uh, and as a repository uh, for uh, storing and forwarding data that's being transmitted between internet users. Uh, for this service, the subscriber must pay an annual fee, uh, usually something around about 10 to 15 pounds a month. Uh, and in addition, uh, he will also have to incur the amount of telephone costs that he incurs while online. The first uh, use I'd like to have a look at is uh, sending an email and transferring a file uh, over the internet uh, using CompuServe. This is a file I've created in uh, Word, which I'd like to send to uh, Penny Galbraith. First of all, I need to create the mail message. And address it to Penny. I've already got Penny's address logged in to my address book, so I can easily access that. We see it appear on the right-hand side of the screen. I also like to send a copy to myself for later reference and I can add myself as a copy recipient. The next thing is to actually type Penny a short message to let her know that I've sent her the file. So I can first of all put in a heading. I just type a short message to Penny. And then having done that, I can attach the Word document as a file by first of all finding the file's location within the file base. That's the one I want. So I can double click, click on that, load it into the file attachment dialog box. Just type a simple heading so, so Penny knows what it is. And then I can see that, in fact, that is attached to the email message. And I can send the whole thing to the outbasket ready to load into Penny's account. And that'll be ready for her to access the next time she logs on to the internet. The information superhighway, while we're waiting for the connection to take place, is really uh, referring to the internet, anything to do with the internet and World Wide Web. So that's the transmission taking place, the file and the email messages being sent to Penny's account, and it will be there for her next time she logs on. I can also see that, in fact, in my account, there is some email waiting for me. I can have a look at what that is. And there are four items there ready for me to download to my PC. And I can do this quite simply by pressing the Get All button, and that will transfer that information to my computer. I'm a quantity surveyor in private practice. I run a construction disputes consultancy. I've used the uh, internet for administrative purposes in the early stages, downloading drivers for printers and other hardware I have. I then started moving into conferencing, whereby we could discuss contractual problems with other professionals, architects, surveyors, and the like. Recently, on uh, some expert appointments I had, I was corresponding with the expert witness architect on our side. And in one particular case, I was working late at the contractor's office one evening, spoke to the architect who said his draft report was ready. I had a meeting with the client the following day, so I asked the architect to send me a copy of his report by email. By the time I'd driven back to the hotel that evening, I was able to log on to the internet, download the file, and print it out in my hotel room, ready for a meeting the following day at the airport with the client. I'm Christopher Shaw. I'm an architect. For several years now, we've been using email, file transfer, as part of our general work. Um, at a simple level, moving data around between the various consultants. More recently, we've been involved in consortia projects where live data has to be moved around between a number of consultants, edited, and then fed back. 
by using email it speeds the process immensely. Having successfully completed the file transfer to Penny, I'd now like to look at uh, what's happening in certain of the internet and World Wide Web news groups. To do this, I'm going to access another service provider, a British one called Kix. There are two types of news groups, in fact. One is uh, conferences which are local to Kix subscribers, and the second are more general uh, internet news groups which can be um, accessed by anybody on the internet anywhere in the world. This list comprises something in the region of about three to 4,000 uh, different news groups, and I can scroll down uh, and select which ones I'd like to join. I can also, to save time, um, search for particular subjects that uh, are, are, are of interest to me and see if there's anything there. And there is, I'll, 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 the architecture news group. Uh, I'm already a member of that, so I don't wish to join that. Go back to conferences, uh, and again, I can scroll down the list and join any particular conference that uh, is of interest. And again, I can do a search for a particular subject group. And this is looking for something to do with construction. And I can see that there are two or three there of relevance that I might wish to join. Looking at the news groups that I'm already a member of, which are listed in this particular window, I can see that under construction, I'm a member of the construction computing group, and I can see what's going on in there. This first message is really uh, going back to uh, something I loaded last July, uh, which announced the uh, establishment of my worldwide website, Procodet. And uh, the messages beneath uh, then go on to um, illustrate some comments that other members of that news group made about the service, the problems they were having getting into it over the first few days, and uh, just for me to be able to check that everything was working as it should be. I can then go down a little bit further and look at another message thread, which relates to building design. And Chris Shaw has sent me a useful editorial fax number, which I was requesting. Uh, and I can actually go on to thank Chris for doing that. What I'd like to do next is to go and have a look at one of the worldwide internet news groups. in the architectural news group section. And I can see here that one of the new messages is about building maintenance. There are some pretty arcane news groups on uh, the internet. Um, and this person is looking for something about boiler maintenance. And somebody's actually been kind enough to reply with a news group that that person might wish to access for more information. Through the news groups, you can find a large amount of specialist data which can offer peer support, information exchange, and a wide range of other information that an individual practice or a smaller practice wouldn't be able to find on their own. That can help support a smaller practice, enabling them to bid for larger projects and to coordinate with a wider range of people than they would normally meet through their professional activities. We've seen how easy it is to use the internet and heard how it's being used by practicing professionals. But what's the World Wide Web and how does it differ?